Save login, register or subscribe to save articles for later. Normal text size larger text size very large text size taking out his phone, Mick Fanning looked at the group video message from friend Joel Parkinson in the middle of the rising floods. The former world surf champion, known as Parko, was astride his jet ski outside the submerged Tumbulgum Tavern, near Moalumba in the northern rivers of NSW. That's the pub, boys, Parkinson said on the first Monday afternoon of one the nation's biggest flood disasters. I've literally rescued cats, dogs, and 10 to 15 people on the ski. It's been hectic, just picking people up and going to higher ground. Joel Parkinson and API Robin of a jet ski checking out a house at Tumbulgum, near Moalumba Joel Parkinson the next message to the group chat. An emotional Parkinson and jet ski partner API Robin, husband of comedian Celeste Barber, came across a seemingly empty, flooded home, only for a small boy wearing a life jacket to open the door. Nobody flinched, Fanning said from his Gold Coast home. They said to Paco, we're grabbing our skis and boats and coming with you tomorrow. From that moment, the three-time world surfing champion Mick Fanning and others in the group chat, surfers from Corumban to Byron Bay, knew what they would do. The group text message is a basic social unit of 21st century life, usually exclusive and small in numbers. This message, however, snowballed and morphed into a private search and rescue team involving hundreds of volunteers and community leaders, and requiring a reluctant leader fanning to negotiate directly with NSW Premier Dominic Perrottet for help. Mick Fanning rescues Muwalumba pharmacist Sky Swift on his jet ski. Varela underscore Swift underscore pharmacy one of those enlisted, David Gingell, the former Nine Entertainment chief executive, and a surfing friend of Fanning, said the Northern Rivers community stepped up to meet the challenges posed by the disaster. Telecommunications was non-existent except for text messaging in certain locations, local rescue resources were overwhelmed and isolated residents needed food, water and essential medication. This flood came hard and fast, Mr. Gingell said. I think the scarce local resources were targeted understandably at Lismore, which was devastated. I'm respectful of Dominic Perrottet and Peter Dutton that they started out slowly, but they look to be coming home strong now. I know that some people that were inundated may have a different view. Anyway, there were a lot of gaps, and people gathered around Mix Group, as well as Norm Black, the Trip ADEAL founder, and many other smaller groups up and down the coast to fill those gaps. I've been privileged to have seen some pretty impressive people, but someone like Mick, a person with no formal leadership training, to see the community organizers and volunteers follow him was pretty special. Fanning said that the second day went from dark to dark for the rescuers. The Mick Fanning-led flood relief team deliver supplies to Karaki Corner underscore stores, there were some super dangerous areas, he said. And a lot of stuff to deal with in the water with eddies, logs, furniture, shipping containers, animals, cows. You had to be on all day, it was dangerous, and even when getting into people's houses to get them off boats and skis we were getting dragged around, because there was so much water moving through there. The rescuers got to Merwalumba and realized from community leaders that the evacuation center had nothing. The hospitals had nothing. Aged care homes bereft. The further they ventured from their tweed base they realized that people were without food, water and essential medication. The group chat evolved, absorbing volunteers plugged into their communities, strategizing where the greatest help was required, as well as sourcing goods and services. Narelle Langton and Mishy Canning headed this reconnaissance team, assisted by Renee Honey, Hannah Shepard, Beck and Luke Conforti and Taryn Durbage. It was almost like an emergency air tasker operation. Hundreds of people, 25 to 35 jet skis, 20 to 25 boats, vehicles and trucks and four choppers were working across the entire Northern Rivers. Loading for the next five days, the private rescue operation acted largely independently. Fanning went public with their activities to help bankroll the operation for supplies. Then Mr. Perrottet got in touch with Fanning and asked what was required in the area, with NSW Police Deputy Commissioner Mal Lanyon clearing a number of roadblocks for the group. 
The NSW government has subsequently appointed Commissioner Lanyon as Northern NSW Recovery Coordinator. The Fanning Group relinquished their rescue and recovery activities to police last weekend, although many volunteers are still helping with clean-up work in the Northern Rivers communities. Norm Black, the Trip ADEAL founder, who lives in the Byron Shire hinterland, used his national network, as well as local business and sport contacts, to assist with flood rescue and relief operations. He said the lack of urgency and central coordination at a government level had been very concerning for him. When we first went into South Lismore, there were people thirsty and starving. It was beyond anything you could imagine, he said. Loading, we choppered in 4500 bottles of water through Tim Kale's brother Chris. Last Saturday, with a number of Lismore blokes, Darren Perkins and Chris Haywood, we organized 2,000 sausage sand gas and 1,000 steak sandwiches, and every one of them went. We got medication like asthma puffers, insulin pens, and more into a lot of areas by chopper. And all I could think was surely in this country, we can do better than this. Some of the, the community teams and rescuers are now suffering from the shock of the past fortnight.